Hi everyone. Um, welcome to my tutorial on how to model this uh, Voronoi style bangle bracelet in uh, Blender. All right, this is a follow-up to my uh, previous 3ds Max tutorial um, on how to achieve the same object um, that you see here in this render in 3ds Max. Only this time we'll be using uh, Blender 2.74. Okay, um, we can get started here uh, with just an empty scene. Um, we're going to make this model, as I mentioned in the 3ds Max uh, version, um, we're going to make this model uh, for use as a high quality digital asset or also uh, possibly as a candidate for uh, 3D print as well. All right, um, so the first step we'll do is we'll bring a uh, a torus into the scene, okay, just uh, your regular old torus. Um, if you're doing this uh, with 3D print, you're going to want to keep scale in mind here. Um, the major radius of your uh, uh, of your of your torus is the important uh, aspect of of the object size because since it is a bangle bracelet and there is no way for this to uh, fit on someone's wrist other than to go over their hand, um, you know, it might be helpful to look up uh, the uh, average diameter of um, the average uh, bangle bracelet for uh, whether it's going to be a female or a male uh, wrist uh, and hand size. Okay. Um, in my research uh, for the 3ds Max tutorial uh, where I was modeling it to scale, um, Basically, you know, the average uh, medium size bangle diameter is around 2.3 to 2.5 inches. All right, so, uh, you know, if you were using centimeters, for instance, that would translate as 6.3 to 6.5, etc. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that the radius of a tore is going to be from the center to the edge, whereby the diameter is from edge to edge in the interior. Um, so when you're modeling to scale, you want to keep that in mind that the radius that you're looking at is actually only from the center to the edge and not uh, across the entire diameter. At least that's how it was in 3ds Max, and I'm assuming Blender uh, obeys the same uh, mathematical uh, terminology. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to uh, be working arbitrarily since I'm not intimately familiar with Blender's uh, uh, scene scales and everything else. So um, I'm just going to use a major radius of 1 here, and then the minor radius is just basically for visual aesthetic of how thick you want the uh, bracelet to be. Um, in this case, I'll go with 0 0.22, okay? So we'll start with this kind of uh, thickness. All right, and then uh, the next important thing is uh, for this tutorial in Blender, uh, you'll want to change the major segments to 64, and the minor segments to 24. Okay, and that'll give us enough res resolution to do the following steps. All right, so we want to uh, go ahead up to the modifier panel, and the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to add a decimate modifier over this uh, object, and we're going to use the unsubdivide option with an iteration of one. And immediately you'll see something happening to the topology here. And what it's doing is basically uh, it's reducing the number of edges, but it's also crossing them at 45 degrees. Okay, so um, unlike in the 3ds Max tutorial where um, it didn't reduce the edges, it just uh, translated them to 45 degrees. In this case, it does reduce them slightly. Um, so, but it does give it also the... Uh, you know, the edge flow that we need to do the following steps. All right, so next thing we'll do is we'll go down into edit mode. Well, actually, we before we do that, we're going to need to apply that uh, that modifier before you go into edit mode, okay, or, or you won't be working on the uh, crossed edges. All right, so now that you're in edit mode, um, you're going to want to look at the object um, in the front orthographic, okay, and holding down Shift and Alt, we're going to go into face mode and uh, start selecting 
a crisscross pattern based on one of the central verts here, one of the central faces, I'm sorry, of the object in orthographic mode. So what you end up with is basically just this crisscrossed pattern around the entire object when you do that. Okay. And um, again, all I'm doing here is going into the front orthographic and choosing one of the center, uh, one of the center polygons to work from. And then holding down Shift and Alt, I'm just uh, loop selecting uh, you know, one edge loop which goes all the way around and then another one to crisscross that. Okay, so you're getting this crisscross pattern and um, which is basically what we want right now. And we can pop out to perspective view at this point and uh, go ahead and control I to invert that selection and we'll just delete those faces. So we're left with uh, just this ribbon-like structure around the torus. Okay, of crisscrossing edges. All right, and um, which is what we want. So at this point, we're going to uh, go ahead and vert a smooth vertex. Uh, we'll go ahead to our vertex mode, and we'll select all, and we'll just start smoothing the vertexes down. I'd say about maybe three, four, uh, five iterations. So just hit it about four or five times, and you should end up with something like this. All right. And then uh, once you have that, you can go ahead out to object mode. And as you can see, we're almost we're almost complete here. We're going to add a uh, solidify modifier. And the thickness is all you know based on your personal preference and whether you know you're actually going to take this to to print or or not. You know, uh, so you want to. Uh, just adjust the uh, thickness to your preference. Um, I recommend using an even thickness of high quality. And um, from this point, you can go ahead and add a subdivision surface modifier and uh, give it a couple iterations. And the object is basically uh, complete here. All right. Um, one thing you might want to do, um, which I had forgotten to do earlier, but it's not you know, it's not a big deal, is you could, uh, before you apply the subdivision and before you apply the, uh, the thickness, you can go ahead and uh, uh, scale the object up a little bit. Um, let's see, if we go ahead into sub-object mode and we hit S and then Z, we could scale the object up slightly on the, uh, the Z-axis. Okay. Just to give it some height, uh, you know, it might look better on a on a on a, uh, a wrist with some height to it. Okay, and then once you've done that, you can go ahead out and repeat the uh, repeat the steps. Um, solidify, adjust the solidify thickness, even thickness, high quality, and then uh, your subdivision surface. Give it uh, three iterations. If you're going to take it to print, I, I'd recommend no less than three iterations. But uh, if it's going to be used as a digital asset, uh, you could get away with two and then just apply a smooth shading. Okay, and that's basically that's basically the object there. Um, you can look at it with a matte cap. Um, Again, it's a visually aesthetic uh, bracelet. Uh, what I like about it is if you look through each one of these holes, um, you'll notice that you'll get to see the, uh, the cross shape um, on the topology behind it, which I think is rather interesting. And that even works if you look at it through one of the top, the holes from the top, or you know, even the hole from the bottom, you'll get to see a cross shape, which I think makes it uh, quite unique and interesting. Uh, this is uh, being called a Voronoi style, um, which it is Voronoi style. It's not true Voronoi. In other words, uh, true Voronoi would have uh, holes of varying, uh, varying degrees of, uh, of thickness, but um, in this case, it, they're all basically the same size. So it's not true Voronoi, but um, it's Voronoi-like. All right, so that's uh, that's basically how you create this. It's very simple, very simple shape to create, although it does look complex and, uh, in my opinion, very beautiful and appealing. Um, 
but it, it's really simple to create. Um, the only thing, like I said, if you're taking it to print, I, I am not uh, an expert with the uh, with Blender when it comes to 3D printing. However, uh, you know you'll want to pay attention to this inner diameter, okay, and uh, possibly do some research to get the uh, the right diameter that you'll need in order for it to fit over someone's hand and. Uh, and that's about it. Otherwise, this should uh, go to 3D print very nicely. All right. All right. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I, I I plan on doing some more Blender tutorials uh, in the future. I know that I've been doing quite a few 3ds Max tutorials. That is my native uh, uh, software. Um, however, uh, I like Blender a lot, and uh, you know I, I'm rapidly learning the uh, ins and outs here, so. Hopefully I'll be able to come through with some more tutorials for you in Blender. Alright, so uh, subscribe to the channel and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you again soon. Bye.